Hello, in this video I'll be showing you how to make an exponentially weighted moving average fitted line plot uh, along with a forecast and we'll also qualify the fit with the root mean square error statistic. Uh, again, we have the gas use data and I have 30 days worth of data here. I collected this data um, every day for 30 consecutive days. It measures the amount of gas used at my home in hundreds of cubic feet. Uh, for a 24-hour period. Okay, I'll start um, this procedure. I think I'll uh, make my smooth value. I'm going to calculate a smooth value and I'm also going to create the columns for my forecasts and residuals. Okay, so uh, we need a smoothing constant, which we call alpha. So I'll just pop that up over to the side here. And uh, the smaller we make alpha, the smoother we're going to make the series. The larger alpha is, the closer it coincides with the actual series. So a typical alpha will range between 0.1 and 0.3. Uh, let's try 0.3. So I'm just setting alpha to be right here, and I'm going to grab this number when I make my smooth values. Okay, so we need a starting point, however. Uh, according to our textbook, the first forecasted or fitted value is the average of the first six actual values. So I say equal average, and grab these first six actual gas values parentheses, um, and then now I can make my first smooth value. The formula we're using is to take alpha times the actual value of gas plus 1 minus alpha times the forecasted value, and that'll represent our smooth value. Um, okay, so that's why we needed a forecast first, otherwise we couldn't calculate the smooth value. So I say equal, and I grab alpha 0.3 here times the actual gas plus uh, parentheses 1 minus alpha parentheses times the forecasted uh, value was an E4 enter. I think I'll round this to uh, two decimal places and uh, also this forecasted value here. Let's make our first residual equal actual gas minus forecasted gas, and let's round that to two decimal places. Okay, much better. Okay, now we can uh, start uh, using our regular routine of the forecast being the last smooth value. So I say equal, and grab the previous smooth value. And now I can copy this smooth value formula all, all the way down. It's not calculating correctly yet because it doesn't have any numbers down here. Now I can copy this formula all the way down. And uh, this one too. Okay, clearly this is not right. Okay, and the reason it's not right is I forgot to lock in the cell reference here. So back in this cell, I want to lock in K4, K1, my cell reference. So click next to the K in the formula, hit the F4 key, dollar signs get put around it, do the same thing for the other K1. Now I can copy the formula down and it's working correctly because it keeps on grabbing this cell reference. Okay, I'm ready to make my graph. Highlight day index and gas use, shift control down arrow key. From the bottom, skip over the smooth values and highlight the values of forecasts. Insert, scatter, connect the points. Okay, so we have our fitted line plot. And again, let's do some editing. I'll get rid of grid lines. I'll rescale. I forgot one thing. I wanted to make a forecast one time period ahead. Let me first view freeze panes and let's scroll down and let's make a forecast for time period 31 or day 31. So uh, my forecast will be the last smooth value. 
So 3.75 or 375 cubic feet would be my point forecast for one day into the future. I haven't collected this data yet, so this is my best guess using this particular model. Um, I'll unfreeze the panes here again. And let me just show you something quickly while I'm thinking of it. What if I change alpha here? Uh, if I change alpha, the forecast will change, but so will the graph here because the calculations are all based on this number. So let's change this to 0.8, for example. And you can see the graph becomes much more jagged, much less smooth. How about 0.1? And it becomes very smooth, but, and now you can more clearly see the downward trend. Uh, so, which uh, alpha should you use? The smoothing constant? It kind of depends, but I'll show you a technique where we can choose the best alpha, the alpha that minimizes our root mean square error. Let's clean up the graph just a little bit more. Right-click on the y-axis, format axis, rescale. Let's start at 2, end at 9 by increments of 1. Get rid of the excess decimal place uh, for the... Uh, x-axis, format axis, start at 0, let's go to 31 by increments of 7 for the 7 days of the week. And I forgot to put my one day ahead forecast here. Um, I could add it, I'll add it right now. I select the 31, press on the control key, select my forecast, right click, copy, and then I can add it to my graph. Right click on the graph, paste, and it gets added. Okay, right click in the, in the graph area, select data, series one, edit that, call that uh, actual gas. Series two, edit, that's forecasted gas. Okay, and let's stretch out this graph a little bit. Add axis titles again. So this is my day index. My response is uh, gas use in hundreds of cubic feet. Let's add a title. And this is um, gas use with exponentially weighted moving average. And alpha equals 0.3 in this case. Let's shrink that. Okay, and I'll just stretch this down. And I could do a little more editing if I wanted to, but this looks uh, pretty good. Oops. Okay, um, so the last thing I wanted to do then is measure the quality of fit with MSD. So MSD is equal to the average squared residual. So if some SQ is square in each of these values, then summing them up, divided by the number of residuals, in this case 30. So you can see in the formula. So this is the average squared residual. Let's make root mean square error. And that's the square root of the MSD. And let's round this to uh, two decimal places. Well, let's go three. Oops, going the wrong way. Okay. And uh, if you recall from the last video when I did a three-day moving average, I believe the root mean square error was 1.5. So now we have, this is a slightly better fit because root mean square error is smaller. Okay, let me try one more thing. Let's change alpha and see if we can get this smaller. What if I make alpha 0.4? It does become smaller. How about 0.5? A little smaller again, 0.6. Bigger. So somewhere between 0.5 and 0.6 apparently would be the best alpha, the alpha that minimizes the root mean square error. And that could be used as a guideline to determine your best um, model. However, it's really no guarantee that this will uh, the alpha that gives you the smallest root mean square error is no guarantee it will actually be the best forecasting equation. You can see the new forecast down here now uh, because it all depends on alpha. Okay, that's it.